Hello, my name is Jim McKay. I'm going to try to explain expected value in a little more detail for you. A lot of you have had some questions about exactly how do we use it, how do we calculate it, uh, when does it apply in business decisions. I'm going to start at the very beginning and talk about very simple examples of expected value. Expected value is called the probability weighted average of all possible outcomes. Typically, there are two major outcomes, particularly in oil and gas exploration, success and failure. So we're really talking about the probability of success times the value of success plus the probability of failure times the cost of failure. Two major outcomes, success and failure. But let's simplify it even more than that. We all use expected value when we're making simple decisions. Let me show you an example. Suppose I offered you an opportunity to purchase $10. And the cost, so that's the uh, gain, but it's going to cost you $9. So if we have a gain of $10 and a cost of $9, it makes reasonable sense. You're going to say, yeah, I'll take that deal. That sounds like a great investment opportunity. I'll pay you $9. You give me $10. Well, since there's no probabilities associated with it, the expected value is pretty straightforward. The expected value is if simply equal to 10 minus 9, which equals $1. $1 is the profit we're going to get from making that investment of purchasing my $10 bill for $9. And notice it's a positive value. It's a greater than zero. And so we're very attracted to this opportunity. It sounds like a great investment. Let's have lots more of it. Well, what happens if I suggested that uh, was the other way around? That I'm going to give you $9 gain, but the cost is going to be $10. Now let's look at the EV equals 9 minus 10, which equals minus $1. Okay, what happened to my EV now? It's gone from positive to negative. It's obvious before I even did the calculation, we don't want to make that kind of an investment. Why, it costs too much relative to what we stand to gain. But notice the EV can be calculated in either case. It's a good investment up here where we stand to make a profit on my investment. It's a bad investment here where we stand to make a loss on my investments. So what we're looking for are opportunities that have positive expected values. Now, unfortunately, not everything is quite as straightforward as I give you $10 for a cost of $9. The real world is full of uncertainty. Uncertainty comes into it, and we call that the probability of success, a piece of S. And that's the chance that something's going to work out. Now, on another slide, video, I'm going to show you a more complicated formula for expected value, but this simple one will work for now. Now let's look out, look at a possibility of success that's other than 100%. Let's go ahead and try something at, say, 25%. So if you have a 25% chance of getting 0.25 times my $10, what could you pay in order to make that a profitable investment? Well, the formula says P sub S times G minus C. We can multiply the 10 times 0.25 and get $2.50. So if we paid $2, clearly there would be a positive result of 50 cents. But if we paid $3, now it's going to be a negative result, and it's not a good decision. So now our cost then at $2 equals EV.5. Cost at $3 equals EV minus 0.5, or minus 50 cents. So what we're looking at here is the difference between whether EV is positive or negative, given some uncertainty in the outcome. Now, unfortunately, the real world is full of uncertainty. We're never really sure whether we're going to get the, the outcome that we're hoping for or not. Sometimes we're not even really sure what the cost is going to be. And those are uncertainties that have to be taken into consideration. But for now, what I'd like you to remember is that EV can be calculated even in the simplest cases where we have no uncertainty and no probability. It's always 
and in other circumstances where we have probability, but still no uncertainty. We know exactly how much it's going to cost and exactly how much we're going to get for a game. In the real world, we don't have that. I'll go into that in another video. But for now, what I'd like you to know is that EV can be calculated. It comes out with a number, and it shows the margin of profit that we're going to make associated with the project. In this case, it's going to be a 50 cent margin of profit for every time we play the game. We know that three out of four times we're going to lose, so we probably ought to play it about a dozen times or more in order to get some confidence that we'll actually end up with a profit. Otherwise, we could have a short run of bad luck and never make a profit at all. But if the EV is negative, we don't want to participate in those kind of projects because that's really gambling. Gambling is when we know the outcome is negative and all we can hope for is a short run of good luck. So these are the kind of projects we're looking for. Projects that have a positive expected value, even though there's some uncertainty or chance associated with the game we hope to research. If we can get enough of these put together in our portfolio, we can have a very dependable return on our investments. Thanks for your attention. I'll put together another video now that shows what happens when we have uncertainty associated with our gains or uncertainty associated with our costs.